All right, so for everybody who's with us in-house, welcome. Those of you that are joining us online, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. And today, I want to talk with you about the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, how many of you know life is full of inconveniences, right? Unplanned things, disappointments, people that drive you nuts. And you know, you can't always control people and circumstances and situations. But one thing you can control is how you respond to those challenges. Now I'm going to get a little bit vulnerable with you guys today and talk with you about a challenge that I've been having for quite a period of time. And that's that every time it seemed like, every time I came into the church parking lot, whether it was a Tuesday night, whether it was a Thursday morning, whether it was a Sunday morning, that there was always some new mess that needed to be cleaned up. Uh, you know, maybe a camper had decided that the church parking lot was the good place to set up camp, or, or maybe somebody with their RV thought that would be a good place to park their RV. And so I'd have to talk with people. i say, hey, we can't control what happens out on the streets, but we can't have campers in the parking lot. And of course, they get in my face, they tell me what a horrible Christian I am, how could I have the love of God, and there's just something in me that just gets so angry, burned out, frustrated, no joy at all. Does anybody relate to that ever? I hope I'm not the only one. But the Bible to tells me this, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I came across another verse in John 16, where it says, no one will take away your joy. And I figured out I was blaming everybody else for the anger, for the frustration. I was blaming all of them for the fact I wasn't happy. I had It's everybody else's fault out there that I feel this way. And the Lord reminded me, hey, they can't take your joy away. You can give it away. You can just throw it away. And I realized that that is what I'd been doing. I'd been giving it away. So one particular Thursday, I knew. I knew I was going to be in for a, a particularly larger mess than normal. And the way I knew that is I'd come through on a Wednesday night and saw much stuff that I was going to have to deal with on um, the next morning. And so I had hooked up the trailer to the car. And all the way driving in, I was just rehearsing in my head how frustrated I was, how angry I was, how I wanted to just give somebody a piece of my mind. Then I realized I really didn't have any to waste. But, you know, I, I just had all this stuff that I wanted to say to people. But then all of a sudden, I'm driving in the car, and this song that I had learned way back when I was in kids' church, Anybody grow up going to kids' church, Sunday school? A few of you did. And it was a song that went something like this. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you guys know that one? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the more I sang that as I'm driving in the car, the happier I became. And pretty soon I wasn't all miffed and angry anymore. And then it came time for the big test. I pulled into the parking lot. And there's the whole mess out there. And I'm ready to jump out of the car. And the Lord challenged me. He said, hey, why don't you just keep singing the song? As you get out of the car, just keep singing it. And as I come in, I come grab a, you know, a garbage bag, I put on my gloves, I grab a broom, I grab a dustpan, and all of a sudden, nothing had changed outside. It was still, the mess was still out there. But the thing that had changed was me. And the Lord said, that's exactly who I wanted to change, was you. And now all of a sudden, this thing that I would bemoan that made me angry and so frustrated all of a sudden, I'm out here doing this, this chore out there, but I'm doing it with a completely different attitude. And now, all of a sudden, God is receiving it as my ministry unto the Lord and my worship. Did you know when you approach things with the right heart and the right attitude, whether it's cleaning the parking lot or even uh, unplugging the toilet, 
that God can receive that as worship and ministry unto the Lord when you do that with the right heart. And so, life's too short for us to be frustrated all the time over the things you can't control. Uh, don't let the difficult people, the difficult circumstances, the, the difficult stuff, don't let that get under your skin and get you all frustrated. You just start singing the song. And guess what? I went to YouTube to look up that old song, and sure enough, it's right there. The joy of the Lord. It's right there. But as I was looking at that, all of a sudden the next one down was the Rend Collective um, version, which is the one that Alex and the team taught us today. And so we got a whole new version of the song to sing, where we sing about the joy of the Lord. We make that deliberate decision, in the darkness I will dance. In the shadows I'll sing, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. No matter what you come into on a Sunday morning and the mess in the parking lot, we can make the decision, I'm not going to let that get me. I'm going to sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. Broken down on the side of the road, start singing the song, amen? Husband driving you nuts, start singing the song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I got news for you, not everybody's on your side. Did you know that? Not everybody's on your side. Not everybody's rooting for you. And at some point, you just got to be at peace with the fact that not everybody's at peace with you. And by the way, you don't need their approval to do what God's asked you to do. Amen? So don't let yourself get distracted. The Bible says this, you may give him power to keep him calm in days of adversity. Would you guys read that with me? You, who's he talking about? The Lord. You may give him power. That's us. So he gives us power to keep us calm in days of adversity. Now it didn't say that you won't have days of adversity. But what it tells us is God gives us the power that the adversity doesn't have to send us off the rails where we're angry and frustrated all the time about those kinds of things. We just need to remember the joy of the Lord is my strength and start singing that song. You know, a couple of weeks ago, um, somebody had come into Breakfast Church. Lindy, you'll remember this. One of our neighbors out here uh, kind of started mouthing off to Lindy. Let me just tell you something. If you're going to mouth off to the, anybody... Lindy's not the right one to mouth off to, right? But I saw it. I saw it in your face. Your blood was starting to boil. You were upset at this guy. And I said, Lindy, I got a song to teach you. Last Wednesday, Bob came into the parking lot. And one of our neighbors across the street got evicted. And um, as we want them to think of us as family, you know, he's evicted the... The property manager loaded up all of his stuff, and uh, it was in a truck. He didn't know where to take it, but he figured, well, the church is my family. Go, go put it in the church parking lot. And so we had a whole apartment full of stuff uh, in our parking lot, and Bob came in, mentioned to the man kindly, sir, you're going to have to get your things out of the parking lot. And uh, all of a sudden, Bob finds out what a horrible Christian he is, Right? And did you learn any new four-lettered words, or did you? Okay, so <laughs> you knew most of the words, but there probably was even some new ones you'd never even heard before. And uh, Bob's blood probably started to boil. I said, "Bob, I got to teach you a song. I got to teach you a song." <laughs> a couple weeks ago, uh, Andrew calls me up. He says, "Pastor, my car is in impound. They they towed it." And can you help me go get my car back? And how many of you know when you're, t uh, well, maybe you don't know, but let me just tell you, if your car ever gets towed, you're usually not very happy about it, right? And, of course, you see the guy towing the car, is that's kind of the enemy. It's like, how dare that guy do that? And so as Andrew and I are driving down there to get it, I'm telling him this story about how for months I'd been coming into the parking lot and I was so angry, I was so frustrated 
There was no joy. And then the Lord reminded me that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I told myself, Andrew, I just start singing this song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I say, nothing changed out there, but something changed in me. And so we talk about that. I think I even got you singing the song in the car a little bit. And so when we pull up there, Andrew decides, I'm going to blow this guy away. I mean, in a good way, okay? He, he's probably going to experience something he's never experienced before. So Andrew goes right up to the guy. He says, sir, I know, I know this is probably a tough job and probably there's nobody that comes in here speaking kindly to you. But I want to thank you for doing your job and doing your job well. And uh, he was so kind to the man and that flowed out of the fact that all of a sudden joy was rising up inside of him. That guy gave you a discount. He knocked money off of that to get your car back. <laughs> so, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Would you sing that with me, everybody? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance. In the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, you're as happy as you choose to be. Sometimes you just got to put your foot down and say, wait a minute, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Would you, would you say this with me? I will. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a decision you make where you say, I'm not going to let circumstances, I'm not going to let people, I'm not going to let setbacks determine what I do, how I respond. I am not going to give my joy away because this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And why can you rejoice? Because you realize there's nothing that comes without first being filtered through the hands of the Father. And you know His ultimate goal for you is that we become more like Jesus. We become reflections of Him. And what the Lord does, He uses difficult people, difficult circumstances. He uses all of that to chip away the things that do not reflect Jesus so that what is remains, what remains is a reflection of Him. And so it's important that we understand this no matter what the parking lot looks like. The joy of the Lord is my strength. No matter if you're broken down on the side of the road, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Even if you're getting evicted from an apartment and you got to move into a tent on the side of the road, it's up to you. You choose joy. And you begin to sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now can I just tell you a couple things about joy? One is, it is rooted in faith. Would you say that with me? Joy is rooted in faith. So, life is a test. We don't like to hear this, but it is. Life is a test, and every test that comes along is an opportunity for you to pass the test so God's promotion can come. You don't get to move to fourth grade without first passing third grade, okay? And we, we want to be promoted here, but the Lord says you got to first pass the tests Right there. And so that person that uh, is totally rude to you, guess what? That's a test. That's an opportunity. Will you be kind to the person who's rude to you? Or how about your faith? Will you stay in faith when things are not going as you planned? All of these things are an opportunity for you to respond to the challenging circumstances, to the challenging people, and really show the Lord that, hey, God, I'm ready for the next step in my life. And so uh, it's important for us to understand that everything we go through is really God preparing us, shaping us to become more like Jesus, to develop more character, more faith, more perseverance. And when we understand that, this verse actually begins to make sense. Let's put up James. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And we go, 
time out. What kind of a nut was saying this? <laughs> Consider it pure joy when you're facing trials of many kinds. And he says, because what? You, you know. You know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. It's actually during the winds and during the droughts that the roots of the tree go deeper. And if that's true of a tree, how much more true is that for you and I? God wants our roots to go deeper. See, you grow when your faith is stretched. These tests help you grow in the areas that you are needed in preparation for the increase God wants to bring. We have to have a greater strength to carry the greater things that God wants us to, to carry. But we must steward and be faithful where we are. And when the difficult person comes, how will you respond? When things aren't uh, working out the way you'd hoped they would, will you stay in faith? All of this is an opportunity for our faith to be stretched. So, every person in this room has gone through difficulties, right? Raise your hand if that's... How about you raise your hand if that's not true? Okay, so everybody. We've all faced difficult situations, difficult circumstances. Is there anybody here you've never encountered a difficult human being? Difficult person? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, really true, Andrew. Probably the most difficult human being I encounter on a regular basis is the person looking back at me in the mirror every morning. So with difficult people, difficult circumstances, difficult situations, you've got really one of three ways that you can respond. One is you just run from it. You try to avoid. Now, if you avoid going to the gym, you'll never get stronger. And if you avoid difficulties, you will also not develop the way that God wants you to. So we know that running away from it is not the answer, right? The other one is grumbling and complaining about it. That tends to be my default. Does anybody, anybody there, I mean, you gripe about difficult people, difficult situations. That tends to be my default right there, but that doesn't do it for us either. Can I submit to you a third and better choice? That you lift your heads up, you look to the Lord, and you know, God, this is a test. And I know that you're using this difficulty to increase my faith, my character, my perseverance. So rather than complaining about it, rather than running about it, I mean running from it, I'm going to approach it with an attitude of joy. I'm going to sing that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You're going to help me get through this, and I'm going to be better than the way I went into this. I think we need to give the Lord an applause for that one. The third thing I want to talk with you about is this. We know, we know that uh, joy is rooted in faith, but it's also rooted in hope. It's rooted in hope. Now, we all have bad days from time to time, right? Now, you know it's going to be a bad day if your twin sister forgets it's your birthday, right? Or if your horn goes off uh, accidentally and remains stuck while you're following a band of hell's angels down the freeway, might be a bad day. You guys, the reality is this. We've all gone through bad days, but the truth is this. We serve one who triumphed over the ultimate bad day. And he's here to help you rise above and prevail over your bad days. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't let the dark days, the bad days, don't let that take your hope away. Because where hope evaporates, joy disappears. And where there's no joy, you become weak. And where there's weakness in that case, what happens is you begin to approach life as a victim rather than a victor. There's somehow everybody's out to get you. And so we need to remember that hope needs to be in our hearts. Okay, Maybe you feel like the chains of bondage 
have you wrapped up and there's no way of getting freed up. Maybe you've lost hope. You've had people pray for you. It's like, man, I'm, I'm stuck in this addiction. I'm stuck in this habit. I'm stuck in this cycle. I just, I, I just, and, and you kind of get to the point where you don't even believe anymore. You've lost hope that there's freedom for you. And that's where we got to grab on to what Jesus said, where He has sent me. Would you read the underline with me? He has sent me to do what? Proclaim freedom for prisoners. So whatever binds you up, whether it's the past, whether it's the present, whether it's drugs, whether it's some addiction or, or some bad habit or sin, whatever it is, you got to remember, wait a minute, Jesus came to set me free. And let that promise begin to restore hope back to you again. Let hope be restored. See, your life has not slipped through the cracks. You may feel like God has abandoned you, that God has forgotten you, uh, that He doesn't even know what you're going through. But you've got to remember, He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And you grab on to that. You may think you're alone. Your circumstances and the pain in your life may make you feel like you've been abandoned by God. But you're not. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I love this story. This is back in the 50s when Bishop Lejos Ordas uh, in Hungary, he was imprisoned for six years because of his protest against the communist regime. And they put him in solitary confinement. Now, I've personally never been in solitary confinement. But some of you, maybe you have, and maybe you know a little bit of what it is. It's isolation from anybody else. Okay, No windows. And, and the goal here is to break the man, to break the person. This goes on for six years. And, and his captors were trying to break him. And this is, this is what he later said. They thought I was alone, but they were wrong. The risen Lord was with me in that sail. And that's what gave me the courage to prevail. Communion with the Lord is what enabled me. You guys, the devil wants you to think you're alone. Your failures make you feel like, how could God even love me? But the fact is, you are never alone. He has never abandoned you. He has never forsaken you. God is there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And when you grab on to that reality, what that will do is restore hope. The Bible says God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the God that makes streams in the desert. Where it seems impossible, God's the one that shows up. And He makes the way where there seems to be no way. We got to let that reality begin to reinvigorate our hope and begin to live in light of eternity. You know, the greatest enemy to a joyful living habit is this it's short term thinking. That we think that what I'm going through now is all there ever will be. But God, Scripture says that God has put eternity into the hearts of of His people. And you know, it's a very damaging attack to joyful living is short-term thinking. In Corinthians, it says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those that love Him. Do you love the Lord? Have you said yes to Jesus Christ? This verse is for you. This, this time on earth is not all there is. We don't just focus on the here and now and the problems we're going through. But the Bible says to set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You know, when you're going through the dark times, you can have peace. Why? Because God, who's in ultimate control, the God of peace, is with you. You can even have joy in the difficulties. 
How is that possible? Well, first off, because joy is a choice. No man can take your joy. So why would we give it away? Why would we do that? Our joy is rooted in faith that everything I go through, God is using to develop my character, my perseverance, my faith, to make me more like Jesus. And this is why I can consider it pure joy. Because I'm becoming more like Him. The joy isn't in the difficulty. The joy is in that we are becoming more like Jesus. Our joy is rooted in hope. We all know that these bad days, they're all coming to an end. And hopefully you'll experience that right now. But guess what? We keep an eternal perspective. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And I know that in heaven, no mind has even conceived, no eye has seen what God has prepared for those that love Him. So we talk about heaven. How many of you are going to go to heaven someday? Okay. Heaven is not wishful thinking. We don't talk about heaven because it makes us feel bad when a loved one has passed away. A loved one that was in the Lord. We talk about heaven because it's a promise for those who believe. There's Christian brothers and sisters who we're going to have an opportunity to meet at some point in the future that were fed to the lions because of their faith. They were burned at stakes. Could you imagine as they worship God? What is it that would enable a person to face those kind of circumstances and to get through it to the other side? Because of their faith, their hope. I'm going to be exiting here and I'm going to be there. I'm going to be with Him. Even more recent in our times. There's all kinds of martyred Christians you, you, you hardly ever hear about. I've read stories of churches just like ours. Just humble people that love Jesus. That are worshipping in communist ran states. Where the communist soldiers would surround the building. Lock it up. And set it on fire. You jump out the window. You're getting shot. And the story of Christians like us. As this building. Is an inferno around them. And they sing. Worship together. How is that possible? Because their minds are set on things above. Not on earthly things. And I think too often as our worship team comes. Church family, I am challenging you as the Holy Spirit is challenging me. We've allowed our joy and our hope to evaporate because of the circumstances around us. But the Lord's saying, it's time to make a difference. It's time to make a change. We put our foot down and we say, wait a minute. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will not give my joy away because you can't take it. So regardless of what's happening around me, I have the faith to believe that God is at work through the trials and I have the hope to believe that these trials, they're coming to an end. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen.